So really I'll just quickly echo that amazing acknowledgement of country that we had this morning. Um, that's probably the best I've seen, it's beautiful. Um, I'm a ninth generation Tasmanian, um, so heaps of convict blood, which probably explains quite a lot, but also um, one of my ancestors actually stuck the flag in at Sullivan's Cove for David Collins. So very much a part of the invasion. Um, my talk today doesn't really show any evidence of incorporating um, Aboriginal tradition or practice. And that's something I only really realised this morning when I was listening to that in the country. So hopefully if we're here in two years time, um, it looks a bit different to that. So I was just going to talk about three different models for land caring today and it's mainly just about giving permission to whoever's listening to do land care in Norway. Um, so I've got three examples. Um, land care, uh, the Tasman Land Care Group, which um, is the picture on the left, so pretty much always in a paddock and usually with a shovel. Um, Waverley Flora Park Land Care, which uh, the picture in the middle is one of the rare orchids found there. And then the last picture is from a project which I started a couple of years ago with one of my best friends and that's um, the Earth Collective and that's one of our planting sites in Cambridge. So there they are in the paddock with the shovel. Um, so, so Tasman Landcare Group um, based uh, on the Tasman Peninsula and the Dunalley and Sorrell area. Started off at Bangor, which some of you might be familiar with. And then, um, that's quite a large property, but then spread out to other properties. So it's all about um, the farmers that own the land and actually working in a productive landscape, um, but trying to protect the environment at the same time. They've had some really large grants and I think I said in my bio that I was going to talk about how you didn't need to have structured meetings, but because of the big amount of money and also um, this type of work for these members, it, it is actually work because it's to do with their farm that they're running. So in that situation, structured meetings and doing everything by the book is actually quite important. There's lots of support from the local council there. They actually have an officer that is part of their role just to support this group. So they have really dedicated resources and they have quite a strong outreach focus. So um, they've been doing this for a long time and they've got lots of knowledge and skills to share. So that picture up there with, uh, on the right is a guy with his wombat gait. So it's a demonstration of how um, basically without the gate, the wombats dig under the fence and the wallabies can get under the fence as well. But when there's a gate there, the wombat can push through, but the wallabies can't. So even though the wombats are allowed in, the, the browsing pressure is much less from the wallabies. <coughs> Next one's uh, Waverley Flora Park Land Care. So you can see Bellary Oval and the casino, just so you get your bearings um, up the top of Bellary. So Phil would probably be able to come up and talk quite a lot about this group, but it's changed um, over the years a lot. Um, so it's an old quarry site uh, way back when. The top pictures. Uh, little house that was there, the garden. There's no sign of that now except a little bit of the foundation. And after it became um, not used as a quarry anymore, there was a group set up there that basically have done, they did an enormous amount of work. So that it was car bodies and massive weed infestations and it it's, from what I gather, so I never saw it in that state, but it's nothing like that now. It's an amazing 
um, diverse urban reserve um, in Clarence municipality. And so basically now there's just people that live around the reserve that do lots of little individual actions because there's no need to have uh, working bees or because all the work's pretty much been done. And the other thing is that the council are pretty hands-on and so if there is a weed infestation, they will actually come and do that work for us. So what, um, what I do there at the moment is really around advocacy. So I'll tell the council if there's an issue. Um, and I also do quite a lot of citizen science. So what Jacob was just talking about with iNaturalist and, and even beyond the data, I have had people message me on iNaturalist that live around the reserve and say, thank you so much for putting those observations on iNaturalist because now I know what that plant is. Mm -hmm. So there, there are, it, it can spread quite wide the benefits of using something like iNaturalist. So, um, yeah, the, the picture down the bottom there in the corner, that's, that's an orchid photographer, <laughs> which is probably my least favourite type of photographer. <laughs> um, so we have a really high pressure uh, on the orchid population there, unfortunately, and that's something that we've been trying to work with the council on how to resolve that. Um, one of the issues is that each individual photographer thinks that they're the only photographer. But if I go up there for a walk every day during that season, every single day, every time, there is a photographer there. And they're standing in the orchid habitat with their camera set up, they've got their backpack squashing the orchid habitat, and um, the cumulative impact of that is, um, yeah, not great. So. Obviously we want people to love orchids, but that's a challenge that we're working on at the moment. Um, so the pe other people out there that love Waverley, everyone does what they are comfortable with. So there's people out there that when it's a drought year, they leave water out for the animals. Um, there's people that every time they go for a walk, they only pull out a certain type of weed. So it's, it's a whole lot of dispersed people just doing little things to look after that reserve. Uh, okay, so this is the last one. So the Earth Collective. Um, started this with one of my best friends. She wanted to plant trees. She wanted a million people involved. And I said, I don't have any energy to deal with strangers. <laughs> and so we tweaked it a little bit. Um, and the other thing that um, drove it was, we were doing things in our lives for the environment, but we had all our family and immediate friends not doing those things. And I'm sure that lots of people in here can relate to it, where, um, you know, you've got, I don't know, your mum or whoever, saying, oh, that's great, you've done that, but then they keep doing what they're doing. <laughs> and so we felt that it wouldn't be authentic if we were just getting them converted. And we really wanted to amplify our impact as well. So we set up this group so that it was attractive to our family and friends that weren't land carers or didn't necessarily have a strong environmental focus. And um, yeah, so we had to think a bit differently about that. And, and part of it, that was around um, this idea of radical hope where the impact of individual action versus corporate action and um, and how we deal with 
you know, what's going on in the world and part of that is actually doing something yourself. And so just finding a way to amplify it was, was important. So we um, also went to family and friends for plan, planting sites. So we're pretty lucky to go out to Houston's farms um, and engage with them to actually plant out there, which ironically, when I was the facilitator at Tasman Landcare Group, I worked really hard to try and engage Houston's farm and they did not want a bar of it. But then as soon as we approached them from a friendship, oh, like that long-term family friend scenario, they were like, yeah, of course we can plant there. <laughs> um, slide. So um, just to compare the, a few different ways of land caring, um, which I pretty much probably covered everything that's up there, but yeah, they're quite, quite three quite different scenarios. But as I was preparing this, I realised there was things in common because um, there's a million other scenarios. So pretty much. Any type of land caring, I would recommend that you do not skip on morning tea. <laughs> um, and most of you, well, I know some of you know this already, but if any of you are sort of more like, let's just get the plant in the ground type of people, I think you do actually need this message. Um, <laughs> it does not matter what you're doing, even if you're just by yourself going and pulling out weeds or whatever, you have to have good cake and <laughs> coffee and yeah. Uh, so honesty, uh, this was being honest with yourself about what you're willing to do. And I've made the mistake of in this area before where I've done what I, what other people thought the group should be doing and if you don't enjoy it or you're not passionate about it it's can sort of fall over quite easily because you're doing it as a volunteer and you just don't put the time and effort in that you need to to actually make it work. The reason I put the bone seed up there is because um, I'm not willing to use chemicals, but some people are. So if I see bone seed up at Waverley, I will try to pull it out. I could not pull that out because it was, had been broken in the past and had a massive root system. But I did put it on our natural list um, so that it could be found um, by the council or whoever was particular by the council. Um, I didn't actually go and tell the council about this one because I was with someone else and I said, oh, there's this bloody bone cake down there that I couldn't pull out and they actually came, they pulled it out. So. <laughs> but yeah, I just want to give you permission to say no to the things you don't want to do and yes to the things you do want to do. And the other third thing that's consistent across all those examples is the desire to have a net positive outcome for the environment. Um, I have seen examples where this is not the case, things like brush cutting for views, um, or plant, like landscape planting in a remnant environment. Um, but that's not that common, luckily. So yeah, just stepping back and going, am I actually having an impact? 